The discovery of unmarked mass graves at indigenous boarding schools in Canada is sparking renewed efforts here in Michigan. More than a thousand bodies have been found so far there, and native children were forced to attend boarding schools throughout North America, starting in the 1800s and lasting until the late 20th century. Michigan was home to the longest running boarding school located in Harbor Springs, which closed in the 80s. Tribes calling boarding schools the genocide of Native Americans. My Target 8 investigation is uncovering the ugly history in our state in a two part piece, beginning now at 6, with a rare interview from a woman who attended the school in Harbor Springs. Harbor Springs hosts summer homes for the wealthy. Well manicured lawns line the view of the bay. Downtown, filled with shops, art galleries, and restaurants. At the end of Main Street, is Holy Childhood of Jesus Catholic Church, once called by the children who attend it, Unholy Childhood. If I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know. This history oh, is often it. hidden. This is the only part of the school we managed to negotiate to keep. Sometimes you in plain sight. You go, oh, I wonder why that brick is there. Each of these bricks stands for a child. And this I entrance and one classroom are all that remains of Holy Childhood Boarding School. Kateri so Walker attended and survived. Others mm -hmm. did not. Children did die here. Well, they're going to educate me to the white man's golden rule. In the late 1800s, the federal government took over the indigenous boarding schools with the motto, kill the Indian, save the man. And when they thought that they had changed me, cut my hair to meet their needs. Everyone in America can be whoever they want to be, but we're not allowed to be who we are. Will they think I'm white or Indian? There's a manual how to break our spirit. There's an actual manual that exists. Kateri was six years old when she started school at Holy Childhood. She's one of an estimated tens or perhaps hundreds of thousands of children who attended native boarding schools that were primarily run by religious organizations and overseen by Washington. She was brought here by her mom. Others were taken from their homes in the middle of the night. Some families taught their children hide and seek to avoid going away to the schools. The idea was to remove America's so-called Indian threat by taking the next generation, ending their cultural practices, forcing them to speak English, and cutting their hair, which in Native American culture holds their memories. These buildings, once beautiful on the outside, were hiding the ugliness inside. This is the last standing boarding school in Michigan, Indian Industrial Boarding School in Mount Pleasant, where roughly 300 students attended every year. Two others, the Holy Name of Jesus Indian Mission in the Upper Peninsula and Holy Childhood in Harbor Springs, have been torn down. But Kateri held on to the memories. And it's scary. I used to get migraines just talking to anyone about it. I used to think as a six-year-old, I'm going to tell. And so here I sit as an adult, um, and I'm speaking, and I'm telling. The schools were set up like a prison. Since we didn't have names now, we had you numbers. You had numbers. So yes. what was your number? My number was two. The days filled with school, chores, church, and abuse, physical, emotional, and sexual. From what I was told, the orgies were held in the basement. According to historical accounts, boys were the main target of sexual abuse by the nuns, but everyone was fair game for beatings. When you heard the nuns' footsteps coming on the wood and you saw the shadows coming behind those um, big windows, mm -hmm. you go, sister's coming, sister's coming. So everybody would clean and run and try, you know, but you didn't want to be near the door because when she came in swinging, she would hit whoever was there. And you can't tell your parents. You can't complain to anyone. No. Children were kept away from their families for months, sometimes years. If they told, the abuse would get worse, and parents would be denied visits. This letter is from a native mother pleading to see her child, writing, I want to know if I can get my little daughter home for vacation. I sometimes get lonesome for her. So I got taken to the basement. Kateri recalls being punished for hugging her mom too long at the end of a visit. And you're how old? Nine. It was a traumatizing and humiliating experience. Still, Kateri considers herself one of the lucky ones, leaving the boarding school at age 12 in 1977. I talked to Zeus today. She went off to graduate from the University of Michigan and pursue acting in Hollywood, avoiding suicide and addiction that others 
did not. Oh, the tears are for those people that didn't get to have innocence. They didn't get to have laughter. They don't know love. Coming up later tonight on Wood TV 8. How many children do you think died at these boarding schools? The new effort to find the students who never came home. What is your message to the state of Michigan? Do you think that they have any role in helping to look for these mass graves? Yes. Yes. Part two of my Target 8 investigation, Dark History, airing tonight at 1130, right after the Olympics on Wood TV 8. Intense history that that a lot of not a lot of people know about, Bill. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, a lot there in in our history that we uh, haven't explored yet. Mm -hmm.